In a recent video, I gave four reasons why Christians should never drink alcohol and made a case for drinking alcohol being a sin, even in moderation. One question that I got from some of my viewers in response to that video is, didn't Jesus endorse drinking alcohol by turning water into wine at the wedding at Cana? That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But before I do that, I highly encourage you to enroll in one of the free online Bible courses at AmazingBibleStudies.com. AmazingBibleStudies.com has two free Bible courses that you can enroll in called Storicals of Prophecy and Bible Answers. Storicals of Prophecy uses the stories of the Bible to illustrate prophetic truths, while Bible Answers is more of a topical study of Scripture. Some of the things you will learn about in these Bible courses is the reliability of Scripture, salvation through Jesus Christ, the Ten Commandments, who is the Antichrist, what is the mark of the beast, and more. Click on the link in the video description to enroll in one of these free online Bible courses today. John chapter 2 records Jesus' first miracle which was turning water into wine at the wedding at Cana. Verse 6 through 10 tells us, Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw out some now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. There's a couple of things that I want to highlight in this passage. First of all, the amount of water that Jesus turned into wine. If you have six water pots of stone containing up to 30 gallons of water, which were turned into wine, how many gallons of wine is that in total? That's up to 180 gallons of wine. Now, I don't think you need me to tell you that's a lot of alcohol. The alcohol content of wine in Bible times was lower than the alcohol content of wine today. From what I've read online, the alcohol content of wine back then was about 5 to 7 percent, which is comparable to beer today. According to a Google search I did, the average person gets drunk after about 2 to 5 12-ounce beers in one hour. And there is the equivalent of about 11 and a half 12-ounce beers in one gallon. That means the 180 gallons of wine that Jesus made had the potential of easily getting over 360 people drunk at the wedding at Cana. One estimate of the number of people at the wedding at Cana, which I came across online, claimed that there could have been up to 100 guests at the wedding at Cana. So it could have gotten all of them drunk over three and a half times over. Do you think Jesus would do something like that, especially considering all of the warnings the Bible gives about drinking wine? Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 tells us, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. And Proverbs chapter 31 verses 4 through 5 says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. The first thing affected when you drink alcohol is your judgment. Even after one beer, your judgment is impaired and it could lead you to compromise your faith. But some Christians insist it's okay to drink as long as you don't get drunk. And Jesus wasn't forcing people to get drunk at the wedding at Cana when he turned water into wine. But there's still a problem with that. It violates a Bible principle found in Romans chapter 14 verse 21, which tells us, It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Even if there were two or three guests at the wedding that had problems controlling their drinking and were prone to drinking too much alcohol at times, or even worse, alcoholics, Jesus would have caused them to stumble by turning water into alcoholic wine. 
So what's an alternative explanation? It was an alcoholic wine that Jesus turned the water into. It must have been grape juice. The word wine in the Bible is used to refer to the fruit of the vine, both in its non-alcoholic state, better known as grape juice, and its alcoholic state, better known as wine. Oftentimes, but not always, grape juice is referred to as new wine in the Bible. One example of this is Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8, which says, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says do not destroy it, for a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. This verse calls the juice that you find in a cluster of grapes, which is grape juice, new wine. Another example of new wine referring to grape juice is Matthew chapter 9, verse 17. There Jesus said, Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Wineskins were made from the skins of animals, and when they were new, they were flexible and stretchy, but as they aged, they became hard and brittle. It was not safe to pour new wine, in other words grape juice, into old, hard, and brittle wineskins, because the new wine, not being fermented yet, would start to ferment in the old wineskins and produce gases that would cause them to break and spill the juice inside of them. In an attempt to try to prove that Jesus turned water into alcoholic wine, some people point to John chapter 2 verse 10 where the master of the feast said, you have kept the good wine until now. In our culture, people consider the alcoholic variety of wine the good stuff, but Jesus' time and culture was different than ours. First of all, back in Jesus' day, alcoholic wine was abundant all year long. It was easy to get alcoholic wine back then because grape juice ferments by itself. The problem they had was keeping it from fermenting. They couldn't just go to their local corner shop and pick up a bottle of fresh grape juice whenever they wanted to because they didn't have the technology to keep grape juice from fermenting like we do, like preservatives and refrigeration. Instead, they did things like boil fresh grape juice to create a syrup that didn't ferment easily and later they reconstituted it with water. It was also common to dilute wine with water. This was usually done at around a 3 to 1 ratio and even up to a 20 to 1 ratio in some cases. They did this not only to keep themselves from getting drunk, but this was also done to purify their drinking water. Because the drinking water in the Roman Empire wasn't as safe as the drinking water today, so they added some wine to it so the alcohol could kill the germs in it. Also, it gave their water a better taste because the water in some environments was notoriously foul. People in the Roman Empire apparently also had a way to filter alcohol out of wine. I came across a quote by Pliny the Elder, who was a Roman author and naval commander, who wrote, that wine with the strength reduced by the filter was the most suitable drink for all men. That being said, fresh grape juice was not as abundant as reconstituted grape juice or watered down wine because they were only able to get fresh grape juice during the harvest, which lasted from June to September. So they may have been drinking some other form of lower quality grape juice at the wedding at Cana, and then when Jesus turned the water into fresh grape juice, the master of the feast said, you have kept the good wine until now. Another misconception about the wedding at Cana is that the guests were already drunk when Jesus turned the water into wine, because in verse 10, it says the guests were well drunk. Some Christians assume that means they were intoxicated, but if that's the case, does that mean Jesus turned water into wine so they can get even drunker? Did Jesus want them to get hammered now? Was being well drunk not drunk enough? That doesn't make sense because again, Jesus would be violating his own word. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 says, And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. The guest being well drunk simply means they had had their fill of grape juice and now it had run out because they drank it all. And soon they would want more because it was common for weddings like this to last a few days. So Jesus turned water into grape juice to supply their lack. 
Another thing, if they had been truly drunk, they wouldn't have distinguished between the superior wine Jesus provided and the inferior wine they drank before. Alcohol diminishes taste buds. I know because I used to drink a lot and after a beer or two, it all tasted the same. So the fact that they were able to make that distinction is proof they were not drinking alcohol and were not intoxicated in the least bit. Check out my Christian t-shirt store by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen or the link in the video description. Some of the shirts that you can find in my store include my Bible acronym shirt, my no matter who is president, Jesus is king shirt, and my Sabbath keeper shirt. These shirts can be a good conversation starter to help you share your faith and proceeds from your purchase keep my channel going to reach more people with the gospel. Jesus did not turn water into alcoholic wine at the wedding at Cana. If he did, he would have violated several principles of the Bible, like not putting a stumbling block before another believer, and he would have enabled the wedding guests to get drunk by creating 180 gallons of alcohol. No, Jesus turned the water into grape juice at the wedding of Cana. That's the only logical explanation of this miracle if we want to explain it in a way that stays true to the principles of the Bible and the character of God. I can't imagine Jesus creating something and offering it to people which causes so much suffering, disease, broken homes, and death in the world with the potential of causing people to become alcoholics and lose their salvation. I'm sorry, but the Jesus I know wouldn't do that. After watching this video, do you think Jesus still turned water into alcoholic wine at the wedding at Cana so he can keep the party going? Or does it make more sense to you that he turned it into grape juice instead? Let me know in the comments section. This video is the second part of a series in which I'm doing about alcohol and wine in the Bible. Click on the screen to watch my first part entitled, Four Reasons Christians Should Never Drink Alcohol. Please like and share this video to help spread God's word. Thank you for watching and God bless you.